Scott, um, you've been to Lake Placid a lot. <laughs> yes. When did you first come here? What year do you remember? It was in the early 70s. I came here for the summer competition. My mother was really excited to go. She said, you're going to be skate you're skating against people from Canada, and they're very good. So it was uh, really fun to be here. Um, came in second to Ray Belmonte. I don't remember any of that. I'm just kidding. Um, and it was uh, really fun to be in the Olympic arena and just see the rings and uh, just be here. And, and uh, you... You've seen Lake Placid from the 70s. Yeah. Has it changed much in your view? You know, it's, it's kept its identity, and I think that's really important for a, you know, a city not to get so overwhelmed by its history that it feels like it has to blow itself up into something else. You know, I've seen so many um, Olympic cities kind of leverage so much to be able to be the Olympic city that they're crushed under the infrastructure once once the Olympics are no longer there. And I think Lake Placid has been able to maintain the facilities beautifully. They've been able to train athletes here and they've been able to keep their civic identity without it becoming something that where people are going to get hurt. You mentioned the, the cost of the Olympics going so high, no one really wants to bid on them anymore because it's going to put them in so much debt. What's the answer to that? Well, a lot Is of people. You, yeah, I think it, it, it's all perspective. You know, you look at Sochi and they said, $60 billion, are you kidding me? That's insane. Who can do that? No, Putin used that as a public works project. It was really to build infrastructure because he loved that region because he grew up there. So it wasn't, it was a, it's about an excuse to take a region and elevate it and allow it to be what it needs to be. I look at Vancouver, they could totally host another Olympics tomorrow because they have the infrastructure. Same with Salt Lake, same with uh, Calgary. They have the infrastructure in place to host an Olympics tomorrow if they need to. So I think if you're able to do that, if you're able to um, keep your budgets where they need to be and look at it as a long-term deal, then you're able to monetize things over time instead of it just being throwing a lot of money at 16 days and then um, now what? You know, it's got to be done. Like Sochi, um, when they built that Olympics, a lot of those facilities were dismantled and moved to different places around Russia. Okay, that's one way to do it. But, um, you know, I, I look at, um, you know, Pyeongchang, again, it was... A lot of those buildings are going to be moved and they were temporary and, and they're going to be able to create t training areas for their different athletes. So I think that's kind of a long-term plan. I think summer games, cities like L.A., uniquely positioned with all the stadiums and arenas to be able to host events anywhere. And they're right on the water. That helps, too. Um, but, you know, again, it's, 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 you know, cities should only do it if it's a long-term thing and not just for 16 days. So should Lake Placid consider hosting another Olympics? Well, I mean, look is at the size. For them, is it possible? I, I think you know, I'm 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 impossible. <laughs> so you know, it's like, who am I to say no when there's no reason in the world I should be standing here? You know, I well, mean, you know the village well enough. You yeah. know the facilities. You stayed in a lot of the facilities as a young young man. Can they do it? They did it in 80. They did it in 80, but th I think it's their fault that the Olympics got so big because of what happened here. Just the history that was made, um, the enormity of the stories and, and um, just uh, outrageous um, victories and the performances and everything that happened here. Uh, people go, I want more of that. And so you had to go to a bigger place, bigger, 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 bigger. And then you get into major cities like um, Calgary, Vancouver. Um, my goodness, um, you know, you're getting into areas that are gigantic and have the infrastructure with hotels and um, media centers. I mean, I think... Um, We're talking about cross-border and maybe going as far south as Albany yeah. as a split Olympics. Well, I, when you look Placid. at, I mean, I look at um, um, Alberville, you couldn't get to the two furthest uh, venues in one day. You had to take a helicopter, right? So, I mean, you can do a regional Olympics and you have the infrastructure to pull it off. I think that's probably a wise way to go because in order to be able to house enough people here in Lake Placid, you're going to have to build, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 hotels plus. And then, you know, what are you going to do with them afterwards? You know, so um, a regional play would probably be best. Or, you know, you Will can the IOC go along with that? 
Well, I think the IOC will do anything that can keep the, you know, the money machine going. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, when you look at it, it's like a billion dollar volunteer organization. I think they, you know, I think they need to, to, to really think about trajectory and uh, responsible growth and making sure the Olympic movement remains the Olympic movement because it's easy for the money, you know, becoming the tail that wags the dog instead of the dog wagging the tail. So, yeah, I mean, Lake Placid has the facilities, has the, um, the infrastructure, but the, the, the Winter Games have gotten so gigantic now that, I mean, I think it would be, a, it would be stress on the community to be able to host another Olympics. Yeah, on on their own. What does it mean to bring this uh, group back together? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, a, it's such a special time. You know, you, you know, reunions are reunions, right? You know, you look at, um, like, high school reunions, college reunions, whatever. I mean, those are special, special um, periods of time that are meant to be remembered and celebrated in a way, you know. But the Olympics, and this team especially, we, we'd be on the phone. We'd be at competitions. We'd be traveling all over the world and just saying, wouldn't it be great? That we're like Charlie, me, David. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be great if it was, you know, Linda and Lisa and Sandy? Wouldn't that be awesome if it was, you know, Ty and Randy and Peter and Kitty and and um, you know, Dave and I mean, uh, Michael and Cheryl? It's like, yeah, we we're the dream team. I mean, we every single person on that team wanted this team. They wanted these to be the individuals, and and so it it, it just sort of was one of those. Are you kidding me? We're actually going to the Olympics together. And we were very tight back then, and, and you know, when we get together, no time passes, none.